Hello everybody and welcome once again to Forever Stranded. Now, at the end of the last episode, or during the last episode, I was trying to look, figure out what this guidance computer hatch does. And I figured that out, mostly, I think. So let's have a quick look at that one. So it's over here. I've also been clearing out this area here as well. Just to make sure that nothing over there is causing any lag. Because I'm getting a little bit of lag around the base. Right, here we are. Here's a rocket. This is my asteroid rocket. And this is the guidance computer access hatch. You link it to the rocket. And in it you can auto-eject different types of chips. So you can't actually auto-eject an a, um, asteroid chip because they get consumed. And here I've got a loading state inverted. Now that basically means when there's a chip in here, then it'll go on. So here I've got a chip ready, okay, and here I've got a conduit which is set to redstone, active with signal. So when I click this, that that chip's going to go out of here and then get pushed into the access hatch. So let's turn it on, and then when it does that, then it turns on the red, redstone signal, and this is now in here, as you can see. But not only is it in there, it's also in the rocket. If you have a look at the guidance computer here, you see the asteroid chip is in there as well. Um, the number's important, 470535, because that should be the same one as this, which it is. So, now we can just simply launch this, because everything else is ready, and there it goes. I've got lots of engines on there, and that goes up very fast as you can see. The fuel goes down quite fast as well, but that's because it's got a, a bit more weight because of all the engines. Now you see we've, it's started. So I shall come back in a second when that's completed. Right, here it comes back again. As you can see the mission is complete. And it'll land. And we could actually stick another chip into this one, couldn't we? So let's press escape. We should be able to see the rocket coming down any second now. It shouldn't be up there. We'll get that nice big square of light as it comes down. There it goes. And there it comes down with whatever it's got into it. We don't know at the moment. I had to empty out the uh, the chest, the crate, because the crate got full. I was playing around with asteroid mining for quite a bit to see what's going on. And here we go. That's such fun watching these things come down. And there it is. Now that should start to be putting, yes it is, indeed it's putting lots of cobblestone into here, which is getting taken out. I'm not sure if it produced any ores. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, that is how these guide this hatch works. So of course I could put another asteroid chip into here straight away and it could send it off again and do another mine. So that's really I think its main purpose. And maybe it's also to send up rockets to different shuttles. So now let's go to the moon. This is my rocket. I actually reconfigured it a little bit so I put the access hat on hatch on the top. So what I want to do is get out of my bag here. I'll get my chip out. I think I want the lunar chip and that's one of planet ID lunar, yes that's the one. So I've got two Earths and two Lunars. And it doesn't actually matter that much. So we can sh ah, we can just get on this one. Destination not available. Press the, the magic button. Select the guidance computer. Put Lunar in there. And let's press space to take off. I think we're fueled up. Yes, we are. While we're going up, I'll put my helmet back on. In fact, I don't actually need my helmet. Let's take it off. Cars. A bit of reasonable amount of wind today, you can see. The moon's been terraformed and it has an atmosphere which is breathable, which of course means it's got mobs now. So the risk of dying is uh, certainly increased and reduced at the same time, funny, huh? Now, let's have a look. There we go down. As you can see, we're coming down to extreme hills mutated, or extreme hills plus mutated. And we're landing at, at our sort of base. And as you can see, terraforming is still 
going on. Now this causes a bit of lag, unfortunately. Now I have found let's get off here, get out of the, the fumes. I have found uh, the location of the lunar landing and I'm not going to show it to you so I'll come back in a second when we're actually getting near to it so you can see what it actually looks like right I'm very nearly there and as you can see when you've done terraforming you get this sort of these light patterns and actually causes quite a bit of lag so we'll go very slowly along here and here it is so this is actually what it looks like so you get a little landing vehicle and you get a flag so there's the flag and there is the lunar landing vehicle so look down here I should have see one flag and one lunar landing vehicle with one, with one engine on it gold blocks and some iron bars I guess this is made out of iron bars too yeah interesting what you can do with iron bars never knew that actually so that is this so I'm going to go back to the base uh, as you can see if I go back I'll give you a clue it's around about hmm, it's less than 3,000 and more than 2,000 blocks from zero zero so, so I'll see in a few seconds when I've got back to the to the ship as you can see this process is it's actually quite slow for the terraforming and every time a light hits it should remove one of these blocks of whatever it is here so at the moment I think we're on Stone Beach so I'll see you in a few seconds right just about just about back now you'll see the cows have spawned no you'll also notice that no sheep of uh, not sheep no trees have spawned or been spawned in in this uh, in this world when it's been terraformed but I've been here long enough now where's my rocket gun to oh there you are I knew you could <laughs> one of these things you get very close to it and you can't see it is it actually fueled up let's have a quick look yes, it's ready to go back and now we need to select the destination of course so what we'll do is we'll click the rocket guidance computer take out the loop hmm that's strange I just wonder if I actually ran out of memory because I've been trundling around so let's just swap these two chips over now and we should be able to go back to earth you see I've put the seat up high and you can actually see more when you're flying around which is quite nice as well we just see less of the rocket so the only other thing I haven't figured out yet in advanced rocket drill is I think it's called the planet selector I've no idea what it's for it looks like it's a warp controller but it must be something else and I'm going to have to ask and find out what that does and try it again and see what happens so right we're back on that so let's just jump off this thing I was like jumping off the rockets in fact I'm going to go back now to the base watch my mini map as I come down it's around about the doorway get a bit of lag now what I've been doing in, in my base is to actually try to minimize the lag it's not too bad now but I do get it from time to time what I've done is I have set up a a quantum link ring here as described by etc basically this one is connected to a second controller and I've got three uh, 32 well three dense cables colored dense cables so they don't connect together I could use the uh, anchors to to keep them apart but I thought colors is, makes it slightly different and from here then I've also removed all of my um, what have I removed I removed the is micro uh, assemblers and the interfaces and the uh, crafting blocks we can actually go and have a look at this they're now on the animal farm which I've moved to here and as you can see I've moved everything here and it's actually a bit cleaner in fact as you can here I've got three different uh, cables coming out of these 
all these dense cables and and as you can also see here I've got uh, eight of 32 channels used and here I've got should have about 19 now 19 is because I've got five uh, storage buses on the face of this one and it's a cube of nine oh, sorry three by three by three 27 of which 14 are uh, ME interfaces so I have the the 19 which is correct Phew. I've also moved a bit other things over here like um, these and I've been putting down these spot loaders so the spot loader basically just loads the current chunk that it's in so I've got some a redstone orchids or red orchids here growing and they're being sent over some trees here just doing the same thing so anything that could potentially cause lag I've been moving out of the way to here so that's how it works and this one is also I should actually remove the, the storage bus out of here but I've got a few singularities <laughs> I can't imagine ever using them right let's go back to base so there isn't that much that I've done other than that just if I look down here it's a little bit em more empty down here now so there's less things happening and I'm actually getting lag here now because of the uh, I think this called the double crusher causes a bit of lag as well I'm not 100% sure but it does seem to be better and I would pro probably move the um, the nether star generators as well not that they cause too much of a problem but also because it's actually a bit cleaner to move them out there so I was thinking about move, uh, moving the immersive engineering stuff as well but that's actually a bit of a pain I'm not using it too much but I it's difficult to actually remember where everything goes in here I've upgraded to this as well I was what this was a tier 2 and now it's a th tier 3 and it's doing um, weather skeletons I think they need tier 3 and the, that stuff from the weather skeletons is coming in here like that and it's coming into this chest here and I've got some oh I've got some golden boots what I've been doing here is I've been taking say well I don't really want these boots but let's just take a pair like that and then um, let's just make those sort of holes as it were this is just being fussy to be honest with you and put those into here like that and sort those around so those are the actual items which are coming out of uh, the wither skeletons or the armor items which are coming out of the wither skeletons but what I've been doing is I've been coming along here and on here I have got an an existing item filter and I will show that you've got those items you see I haven't got the gold um, boots let's have a look let's just actually we'll look, I'll just do that like this and then turn this off so it's never active then I can take the existing item filter out of here and then I simply shift right click that onto here like that and then it's added those items into here which is basically gold boots and then I can put this back into here right place and I can show that now we've got some gold boots as well in here and it's also set I didn't show you that but it's set to ignore NTB data in other words the enchant enhan enchantments the audit should say and to ignore metadata so damage is getting ignored so everything basically goes out of here and I simply right click that again so it's always active and I look in here and the boots have gone in fact you can see things coming in and that's actually a really good way of being able to keep it so I just keep a, a stack of stuff in here um, and it just goes straight into the trash like that okay a little bit of a short episode this time um, the last thing I'd like to look at is this one block I don't know what it does the planet selector so until then I'll say bye for now see you next time